Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos in various software products. And today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm talking about exposure blends. So when Luminar AI was first announced, they of course mentioned that layers is no longer built into the product. And so that had people up in arms, uh, including myself. I was frankly very concerned about it. And they said, hey, don't worry. We've got a local masking tool. It let, lets you add a texture, which can be an image layer, and you can do things. And I was kind of like, uh, okay, let me see. Anyway, I've been playing with it for a while. And while I did a video about the texture overlay tool uh, recently uh, using a texture, I wanted to come back and do an exposure blend because you can do that. Now, there are a couple of caveats, and I'm going to show you my tips or share my tips and show you a couple of tricks for making sure that you can do really compelling exposure blends, but there are a couple of caveats in terms of how this works and what you need to have done in taking the image in order to make sure that it works. So I'm going to be working with three different images, basically a base image, a sky image, and a foreground image. And I'll show you how I blend these together using the functionality in Luminar AI. Here are the caveats. The first caveat is you need to have taken these on a tripod because they need to perfectly line up because there is no movement or transform or anything like that. So when you add a texture layer, you don't have the ability to transform it. So you need to be aware of that. And I guess the other caveat is the obvious one, which is you're, you're looking at different parts of the photo. In this case, I'm basically blending some brackets from an, uh, a bracket set where I was shooting HDR, but I'm not making an HDR. I'm sort of, I'm basically just doing an exposure blend. So I don't know if that's a caveat as much as it is kind of an FYI, but let me um, show you what I'm doing here. Here's the image. This is from the lovely city of Dublin, one evening at Blue Hour. I've got three photos that I'm using from my bracket set. Here's the first one, and here's the second one, and here's the third one. So the difference, of course, is the exposure level. That's what bracket sets are. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use the, this is the bright one. I'm going to use the foreground, which for me is the water in this one. On this middle one, I'm going to use the sky, and this first one, the darker one, I'm going to use the buildings. And so here's the first thing you have to do is take the, you're, you're going to have a base image, which is going to be this one, the dark one. I'm going to use that as the base image. The other two you have to export from Luminar because you need to be able to bring them back in as a texture layer or something like that. And I'll get to the details here in a second. But first you've got to export them from Luminar because when you go grab that file, it can't be within Luminar. It has to be outside of it. So these are raw files that I shot, but I exported the two as JPEGs, and that'll work just fine. So here's my base photo, and what I'm first going to do is click on Edit and go over here to the Creative tab, and I'm going to go to Sky AI. So Sky AI, also known as AI Sky Replacement in Luminar 4, allows you to drop in a new sky. Well, the new sky doesn't have to just be a sky. It can be an image from a bracket set, and that's why... It needs to be shot on a tripod because it has to line up just perfectly. So I'm clicking on this. I'm going to say Sky Selection, Load Custom Sky Image. And I've got these two on my desktop. There's that one and this one. So what I'm going to do is use this one for the sky. I'm going to say Open. It's going to drop it into the sky. But as you can see, it's not perfect. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it. That's where Horizon Position comes into play. If you drag that all the way to the bottom, which is negative 100, it'll basically drop that image perfectly on top of your base image. So if I turn off Sky AI, you will see the sky gets darker because that is the old sky. And now when I add it, you'll see that it's gotten lighter. So basically, I just used a brighter sky shot on a tripod at the same time, but at a longer exposure time. So it's brighter. And I dropped that in in order to provide a brighter sky. So there's my new sky. If I turn it off, that's the old sky. So that's step one. I've got my new sky in, so I've already got a new sky on top of my base photo, which is the darker buildings, which I like because it makes the lights and them pop a little bit more. Now we're gonna go get the other image to use in the foreground. So that's where I come down here to local masking tool, and I'm gonna say add, and I'm gonna say texture. And here I'm gonna click on load texture, and I'm gonna go get this one, which is the other image. And now that will drop in. Here's the thing about the textures. You don't have to do the horizon or anything like that. It drops in at 
you know, as a perfect fit. It's just basically that image and it sticks it right on top. It's not like the sky where it's trying to place things just in the sky of the image. It just drops it 100% on top. So as long as it was shot on a tripod, it automatically lines up perfectly as you can see here. Now, if I turn this off, you will see it's actually impacting the entire image and I don't want that. So there it is before and there it is after you can see the foreground is brighter and that's what i want so i'm going to use a gradient mask here to apply this texture so i'm just going to take the gradient mask and i'm going to go ahead and drag that here into the foreground just to apply it like that and maybe something about like that and just trying to get this about right it doesn't have to be perfect you just want to make sure you don't bleed too much into the sky on the left right over here in this corner where that gradient is kind of reaching up there now if you uh do bleed into that you can go also get a brush mask and erase it just in case so there we go i've now got my mask in place if i turn this off you can see the foreground is darker and with that new image added as a texture and turned on you can see it's brighter so now uh, it defaults to 50 percent opacity but if i wanted to make it full strength i could just go to 100 opacity now that's too much it's too blue it's too bright it's kind of off but I think somewhere between you know 50 and 100, so maybe 75. I'm trying to get the foreground to look, um, you know, comparable like it belongs with that sky. Obviously, it's shot at the same time and that sort of thing, but it's a much longer exposure, so I'm trying to balance that out. I would just recommend playing with it. The 50 opacity actually looked pretty good. So again, if I turn this off, if you look at the old foreground much darker because again that's the base image which was shot the same exposure time as the buildings but now that i've slotted in that foreground and turned on you know with the gradient mask and applied it i've got a brighter foreground so i'm going to pull that opacity back up i like it a little bit brighter but season to taste do whatever you like but that's how it works my friends you can easily use sky replacement to drop in the new sky and then texture to drop in the foreground and mask it in you don't have to mask the sky it lines up perfectly as long as you do negative 100 on the horizon position and then with the texture it lines up perfectly again make sure they're all shot on a tripod so that they line up perfectly but the texture file itself can be an image like this you drop it in and you're all set so now if i look at my base photo which was the dark one you can see the buildings are just perfect that's just the way i wanted them uh, but the sky is a little too dark and the foreground is way too dark but put in a different sky and then put in a second different file for the foreground and i think i've got a beautiful blended exposure now i can go do some edits i got a spot i need to take out i might crop it things like that but that's how you do it my friends that's a simple and easy and fail safe way to do an exposure blend in luminar ai hope it gives you some ideas Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back with more pretty soon. See you guys then. Take care and adios.